This is Ryan. He is a 16-year-old sophomore at Avon Lake, and he is an addict. He has a special kind of addiction. Most people will call it abnormal. Ryan is very closely attached to a pot. He loves to clutch it to his chest and will not go anywhere without it. He will go to any length to be with it. His friends tease him on a daily basis, but Ryan just can't separate from his beloved pot. Ryan has faced exclusion of the worst kind of some of his best friends. His addiction has made many of his peers not want to be around him. A closed study has revealed that Ryan holds his pot up for 20 hours a day, leading up to a total of 140 hours a week, which is 7,280 hours a year. Since starting the school year, Ryan has received several warnings and violations for bringing the pot to school without reason. Each time he is brought in, he tries to argue his way out of it. He believes that he is right and that nobody will ever understand. Despite several threats to be suspended, Ryan is still holding on at school. As Ryan walks down the hallways every day, all the teachers yell at him about bringing his pot to school. Move it along, pothead. You're taking up space. Hey, get back to class. Put that pot back on the stove. One of Ryan's best friends, Chris, cares deeply about his addiction, and he tells us what being a friend of an addict is like. I've known about Ryan's pot addiction for about two years now, but I've never seen anything like this. Yeah, we used to hang out a lot. When he got addicted to the pot, it just kind of happened where he never wanted to be around anyone. We'd offer to hang out, and he'd never want to be around us. He'd just turn us down and be like, no, nah, I'm not going to be His friends make fun of his addiction all the time. They would try to help him, but they failed. Now they bully him. Ryan, you're such a f***ing idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, you're such a dweeb. Get out so of here. stupid. No one likes you. You have no friends, only enemies. Ryan has gotten in trouble multiple times. Hey, what are you guys doing over here? I'm just doing a lab. Ryan, how many times have I told you not to bring your pot to school? It is inappropriate. Give me that. Oh my gosh. You guys are supposed to be focusing on your work, not the pot. This is bad. I'm sorry. I don't want you crying, Ryan. It's going to be okay. You can live without your pot. No. Yes, you can. It's not. Look, it's not it's, possible. It means nothing. This is chemistry. This is your life. Don't give it up for this pot, Ryan. Please, will you try today? I love my pot. How about if I set it over here? One day. It's not the same. I know, it's not the but same. I can't be okay. I gotta go. I'm gonna have to talk to Mr. Vassal about it. I can't believe you are sitting in this chair right now after you have had the scores of people talk to you about that stupid pot. I don't know what to do with you anymore. We have done this too long. We have talked about this too. I can't believe I'm wasting my time on this now. Here's what's going to happen. Because you have been given simple instructions. You have been told repeatedly what to do with that pot. Here's what we're going to do. Your, your insubordination and quite frankly insolence, just I'm going to do what I want, attitude, I'm, I'm done with it. What we're going to do now is I'm going to write, I can't believe I'm saying this, I am going to write up suspension papers for you because you won't put that pot away. It is gonna be for 10 days. It's gonna be for 10 days, and I'm gonna recommend, you re seriously, I am going to recommend we expel you. The way this is gonna work, you will be out for those 10 days. During that time, I am gonna contact the board office. They will contact your parents. We will set up a meeting date, and you are gonna to have to come in in front of the superintendent of schools and explain to him why you are carrying this pot. That's where we're at. Let's get started. He eventually gets in trouble with the Avon Lake Police Department. You know, I've seen this kid around the hallways uh, a few times, you know, and he has been violating this code 327. And um, what we're doing, we're trying to track him down. The pot that he has can be used as a weapon. It's, uh, you know, it can be used it basically as a dangerous um, to the school and uh, to society. So what we're doing is we're trying to track him down and 
you know, eventually he's going to get caught. So what have you done to try and stop him? Well, I know the school has uh, given him down to suspensions and things like that. There's been phone calls, emails to home, doing what we can to kind of control the problem. Oh my, it's my pot. And that's when everybody knew he needed help. Yes, it's okay that you don't understand. No one does. It's not a choice anymore. I have to do it. It's a lifestyle that I've chosen, and I have to. I have to finish it. And I don't have any other options. This is a really big problem. Ryan, this addiction has to stop. It's very unhealthy, and we need to get some help. After the intervention, Ryan learned he needed major help, so he went to rehab. Today is a significant day for me because I'm six months sober now. And I have beaten my pot addiction. Ever since my rehab with my friends, I've learned how to live without pot and how it was affecting my life in a negative way. It wasn't easy, it took a long time, and I was tempted to go back, but I just couldn't do it anymore. It was too difficult for me, so I beat it. And now I've gotten rid of every single kitchen utensil. If I saw a pot again, I don't think anything would happen. I think I'm pretty good about it. I'm confident in my ability to stay away from it. Hey, Ryan. Oh, hey, pot. Hey, come here. I want to talk to you. <laughs> Ryan thinks he is sober, but little does he know he still has feelings for his pot.